Welcome everyone to the round one clash between two Indian players at the candidates in the women's section. We have Vaishali with the white pieces taking on Koneru Hampi. This promises to be a fantastic clash here because it's the battle of generations. Vaishali, very young, just born in 2001, while Hampi has been at the top of chess and women's chess for years. She's born in 1986. Well, we are ready to kick off a shake of hands. Vaishali with white. What will she play? She generally likes to open the games with one e4. She takes her time here. And before deciding to make her move, she's thinking what exactly should be done. It's a rule in the candidates that players from the same country should face each other in the initial rounds itself to avoid any problems later on. e4 played by Vaishali and Humpy responds back with e5. A solid response there and Vaishali brings her knight out to f3. Humpy is uh, definitely known for her very unique style of play. She is a universal player in my opinion, more tending towards positional chess, but she understands the game so well and she's such a fighter, she can keep grinding on for hours. Meanwhile, Vaishali's natural instincts definitely is to go for an attack and by that um, logic, the Italian opening is a very good choice. The bishop comes out to c4 and Humpy now has to decide whether she wants to go knight f6, which is one of the main moves here, or bishop c5, which is the other main move in this position. She takes her time for a bit, thinks. And making her choice she's thinking about it what to play and here she decides to go bishop to c5 well it will be interesting to see what will be Vaishali's choice will she go for a very quick c3 d4 which is getting popular this direct one direct way to play but also very interesting is to just play c3 and d3 with a slow setup that is there Vaishali has come to this tournament with Sandeepan Chanda who is the second who is her second and trainer while Humpy has come to the candidates without any trainer uh, here I'm sure she has the trainer back home but for now she is alone in Toronto Canada so right now Vaishali taking her time this uh, basically the opening uh, both the players are taking quite a bit of time for, to make their moves and uh, let's see what Vaishali comes up with she is thinking and she plays her pawn to c3 and Humpy now knight f6 is the main move in the position she plays it she brings her knight out to f6 and Vaishali now can play either of the two things, d4 or d3. She instantly goes d3. This is known as the slow Italian, where white is not rushing in to make any decisions. But black plays the move h6. Now, this is slightly less common as compared to the move d6 or short castles. But h6 has the simple idea of stopping bishop g5 move, which can get very sharp and I think humpy wanted to avoid these lines against Vaishali. So Vaishali goes for b4. And one of the things here is that you can put your bishop here. And it might seem like with b5 you will lose a piece because knight e5 is hanging but knight a5 is a good move. And after knight e5 you just castle and later on you have d5 coming up, the bishop is hanging and this is very good compensation. So with b4 bishop e7 was played by uh, Humpy and now Vaishali over here brought her knight out to d2. You have castles there by Humpy. Again, not worried about losing this pawn because knight a5, knight e5, and just d5 gives black excellent play. This is a typical way of continuing, and I think Vaishali will not get tempted into it. She goes short castles, which is a good move. Later on, white can even expand further with a4, a5, b5 in this position. 
uh, Humpy now pushes her pawn to d5. So she takes central control. And now if you, by the way, take knight takes, it's still the same issue. Like b5 is met with knight a5. So Vaishali just drops her bishop back. And in a way, Humpy can take here, take here and equalize the space in the center. But she goes a6. And her plan is to maybe play b5 at the right moment. So white can actually play a4 here. That's very normal. But Vaishali goes a3. And I think somewhere Vaishali is keen on maybe take, knight takes, playing c4. When her pawns are protected, but here Humpy goes bishop e6. Just finishing her development, you can see these two little pawns on a6 and h6. Stop any knight jumps from happening and Vaishali brings her rook to e1. So it's a slow game, but now there is a threat to take, take and maybe the e5 pawn is a little soft. So Humpy should be careful, although it's not really hanging. She goes b5 and she tells Vaishali, if you take, take and take here, then I can simply take rook takes and put my bishop here and attack this c3 pawn and win material. So that's the reason why taking on d5 and e5 is not such a great idea. And that's why Vaishali goes bishop b2. The bishop protects the c3 pawn. And that's the reason why now Humpy takes on e4. Um, you can take back with the pawn. You can also take with the knight. It seems like taking with the pawn seems more logical. Vaishali thinking here. And she takes back with the pawn. Pawn takes on e4. And now Humpy can take this bishop. By the way, just to note here, after Humpy took here, Bishop takes e6 was not possible because of e takes f3 intermezzo. So that's the reason why d takes e4, d takes e4, bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop has occurred. And if white can get a4 or c4 here, either of the two moves, white can start to press a bit. But fantastic move here by Humpy to play a5. And now you can see b4 will become weak. You cannot really take here because after rook a5, a3 and c3, both pawns are slightly weakened. So goes knight to f1. That has been played. And uh, maybe Vaishali wants to play knight g3 to f5. What is Humpy going to do next? She goes queen c8. Very interesting move. I think she wants to maybe put the queen on b7, maybe to e6. So some possibilities there, Vaishali brings her knight to e3 and uh, well, if you take on e4, then there is this very powerful move queen d5, which is a double attack on both the knights. So that's the reason why Humpy offers the trade of queens and her point is that after take here, she no longer has to worry about the weakness of the f5 and d5 square. Vaishali declines the trade and she puts her knight on d5. Humpy moves her rook to d8. Now, uh, where does Vaishali play next? She goes knight f6. Here, uh, you cannot really take this because you will lose your queen, which is pinned there. So that's why a check Bish bishop takes was possible. But this time, Humpy thinks it's not such a good idea to trade queen. So she takes queen takes f6. And now the rook comes into the center of the board with rook a d1. Humpy moves her bishop to d6 on a central square. You can see that uh, both bishops are slightly worse. Black's bishop long term because the pawn is on the same color. White's bishop is blocked by its own pawns here on a3, b4, c3. Rook d b8 played, controlling the b5 square. And now Vaishali brings her rook on the d file. She's making natural logical moves, but I think uh, Humpy can now claim a small little edge 
by kicking this knight, uh, rook away then rerouting the knight from c8 to b6 to c4 she first goes rook queen e6 the idea is knight e7 to kick the rook and then the queen is hanging so goes queen c2 and now knight e7 seems like a logical move so the rook is pushed away and rook 5 d3 played so humpy slowly and steadily creating some inroads the knight now has two good options one is to go from c8 b6 to c4 the other is to go to g6 to f4 humpy decides to go slightly more positional she goes knight c8 and where is vaishali's play coming from she goes knight to d2 maybe she wants to put her knight on b3 and a5 putting pressure there knight b6 played so step by step the pressure keeps mounting here on vaishali and she needs to find a good move now a couple of good moves very important she plays her bishop to c1 she realizes that this bishop is not going to be getting active from b2 let me improve this push up and this is very useful because in future when something concrete will start to happen having the bishop there already will make a huge difference so bishop e7 played by humpy maybe she wants to play her bishop to g5 and knight goes to f1 well black has many many moves here one is to play c5 you know now the bishop is no longer hanging on d6 and black would be slightly better but goes queen c6 and i think humpy's idea of course is to put pressure here but vaishali simply ignores it pulls her knight to e3 and tells humpy you can never take here because of this check that is there in the position so humpy's move queen c6 doesn't seem very logical after pawn takes you can take back with the a pawn <coughs> or the c pawn and for now vaishali decides to take back with the c pawn yes this a3 pawn is a weakness but that does not uh, matter so much because um with one weakness white can easily hold on to things rook queen takes queen knight takes queen has happened now this knight defends a3 and b4 so knight belongs there and uh, rook d8 played here by uh, humpy and king f1 by vaishali bringing the king into the game rook takes rook rook takes rook pieces are getting traded slowly and steadily and uh as humpy do she goes rook to d8 she brings a rook to the center of the board offering a trade and king e2 by vaishali yeah that's a nice little move by vaishali and somehow well a3 is a weakness but as we said it's very firmly defended so that's the reason why vaishali understands that there is not much she can do um but so can humpy also cannot do much i think this game is heading towards a draw the king comes to f8 the bishop comes to e3 and now maybe there is a threat like if you are careless and play king e8 bishop takes b6 cb6 definitely gives white to play for something here so moving the knight to c4 seems logical also a4 here is not possible to shake this up because of check and i can take this pawn so goes king c3 here waiting and you don't want to be taking here because such a position is not so easy to fight with black pieces so king e8 played by humpy very calm cool she has all the experience on her side playing such positions so she's not going to falter in a big way f3 played maybe both the players will play until move 40 and then once the time pressure is gone uh, they will just agree to a draw because it's 30 seconds left for vaishali she's down to her last seconds 
while Humpy has a minute on the clock. Pawn push to h5. And he goes, she goes bishop a7. Uh, maybe just trying to uh, hassle the black position a bit. The knight comes back to d6. And what does Vaishali do next now? She plays her bishop to c5. We are going to see some trades happening here. Seems quite natural. Knight to b7 was played. Bishop moves away. And I think the players have found an ideal way to repeat moves and agree to a draw because knight d6, bishop c5, you can see Humpy uh, thinking that there is a gap of around 70 points between Humpy and Vaishali. So clearly Humpy has the higher rating but she knows that Vaishali is, Vaishali is someone you cannot underestimate. On any given day she can play some excellent chess. Bishop a7 is played, knight d6, and I think the players have agreed to a draw. A good fighting game uh, here by both the players. Humpy seemed to be putting slightly more pressure, but Vaishali resisted well. After the game, we spoke to Vaishali. Here is her interview. I'm here with uh, Vaishali. Uh, Vaishali, did the game start getting slightly under pressure for you uh, because the time was running a bit low, also the position looked a bit tense? Yeah, yeah. at some point I think I was worse, like uh, my position uh, it became like very passive and I just gave everything what like she can hope for, queen e6, knight b6, everything and uh, I was really worried at some point. like. Uh, I was also getting low on time, but uh, thankfully I think this queen c6, queen c6 was not uh, accurate. Like I got 93 and uh, yeah, and then it was fine. Because e4 was not yeah, tanking. Yeah, e4 was not tanking. So I think, uh, instead of queen c6, maybe she could have played c5 or something. I don't mm. know. Uh, yeah, it was not clear for me at all what I'm doing. But even after queen c6 and the queens got traded, did you feel that there was some pressure or you thought that after that it's all okay? I thought it's already fine. Like I get king e, king f and king e2, and my a3 is defended. Like only weakness, and uh, yeah, she might play like knight c4, double the rook on fl. But uh, I was I thought like I'm already under control with the queens on the board, and I was not sure. Like especially with pawn on c3, my light squares are weak. Uh, queen on e6. I think my rook d5 was uh, really bad. I gave her this queen e6. I could have played rook d3, I think, and then doubled the rook mm. on d line and. Uh, it should be fine. Were you surprised with her move b5 in the opening? No, I was expecting actually. Uh, yeah, a6, b5, this structure, like I thought she might do that. I was, uh, that's why I played, uh, yeah, for a3, this b5 was my concern. That's why I spent a lot of time on a3 because I also had option queen c2 where this b5 doesn't work, like I can just go direct a4. But after this a3, I've spent one move there, so I didn't want to go a4. Uh, yeah, I was expecting to be fair. Generally, first rounds are very stressful yeah. in such events and facing Humpy, how uh, did it add to the pressure or how was it? No, I was very excited to play her. Like, uh, we have not played so much uh, over the board. Uh, this is the second game actually and uh, also this tournament, I've been looking forward to it. Like, really, we have been preparing it for months and uh, I'm very happy to start the tournament. And when, uh, the, now that the first round is over, do you feel more relieved? Like, uh, was there more ten as you said maybe there was some pressure yes yes uh, yeah i took some time in the opening like you know to get into the i mean the to game thing and uh, yeah i can say that i'm sort of relieved really and yeah. here generally when you are playing uh, prag is in the same hall but here it's very close right like every day it must be like mm -hmm. next to each other yeah. maybe it's the first time sort of so close in every round it would be uh, yeah, like okay, we have played in same tournament all, but probably this is like the very closest to. <laughs> I think. Yes. And and does that add pressure or does that make you feel fine? Uh, it's fine, but uh, sometimes when 
like things totally go wrong in his board sometimes it's very stressful also like i remember in prague when he lost to rapport i was like totally shocked i was playing my game and i didn't know what happened how it happened and yeah there are times where i was really worried with this game but uh, yeah it's just normal we have been playing together for many many years and uh, we check each other's game and sometimes it's stressful also so well, thank you vaishali and good luck for the next rounds thank you sir